What's going on, guys? Um, fantasy owners out there, we are ready now to dive into week four of the fantasy season this year. Um, previewing the guys that are going to help you this week, and then later on another video, the guys that are really maybe you know hurt you last week, kind of maybe to avoid going forward. What's their status going forward? And of course, all the injury news as well. But there's a lot to get to this week. A lot of players to talk about. A lot of things to talk about. Uh, so let's just dive right in. This is the studs video. These are the guys that really went off for us last week, or guys that maybe you don't have on your roster yet, but guys you might want to put in a claim on uh, for this week's uh, games to see what their uh, status is going forward. So um, I'm kind of going to kind of do it a little bit differently this week. Instead of going by position, I'm going to kind of go game by game uh, to just mention some guys who kind of broke out uh, in each game and uh, either. And this video came through for us. I mentioned him on here last week. Uh, if you put in a waiver claim for this guy, I did. And it certainly paid the dividends. Uh, the first game, of course, the Thursday nighter was the Giants in Carolina. Uh, if you put in a claim for Andre Brown, man, you reap the benefits. He, uh, he filled in wonderfully again for Ahmad Bradshaw with his starting moment in the spotlight. And he... And you, he told you, and he went off on him. 20 carries, 113 yards with the two scores on the one yard line. Hey, it's a touchdown to touchdown. And he put up a great, great fantasy week. But the only downside is that now that this does create a very interesting situation uh, in the Giants' backfield. Um, you know, there's a lot of talks, and Bradshaw just made the comment that he's guaranteed that he's going to play this week. So obviously, that's a big statement coming from uh, Bradshaw. But you wonder then what what kind of role is he going to play this week? Are they going to ease him back in? Or are they going to have him go full at it right away? Or is this going to be kind of like a timeshare situation where they split carries going forward? I don't think you want to give up on Brown just yet. Um, it, it just just kind of take a wait-and-see approach as to what his role is really going to be. I think he definitely has earned a role with this offense. We just don't know what that role is going to be. Is it going to be like a touchdown vulture who takes away scores from Bradshaw? You know, what's Andre Brown's role going to be now going forward? Certainly he's a great handcuff option for uh, Bradshaw owners when Bradshaw's healthy. Um, but, you know, just kind of take a wait and see. It's a tough matchup this week. they got to play the Eagles this week. But I still think Brown gets uh, the vast majority of the work. Um, you know, maybe. Uh, it, it's up in the air. So just kind of... Kind of take a wait and see. That's what I thought before Bradshaw said this news, and I was just stunned when he said it. So now, though, I don't know if you can really, really maybe. It's just a tough call. So if you have Bradshaw, certainly if he, if he does play, monitor maybe up until game time. Or if you got to get your lineup in early, maybe you just avoid the situation altogether this week because it is a tough matchup with the Eagles anyway. So just kind of take a wait and see on that. Um, Martellus Bennett, uh, the Giants tight end. We might have mentioned him before, uh, but he had a big game as well. Both tight ends, both him and Greg Olson, had big games this week. Bennett had six catches for 73 yards and a score. He should be owned in all leagues at this point. He's been producing week after week. Obviously, Eli loves throwing to this guy. If you don't have a strong number one, or if you're an owner who lost Aaron Hernandez, um, don't be afraid to start Bennett. He's Going forward, I think he's now a must-start regardless of the matchup. And Greg Olson, on a day where Cam Newton mostly stunk and did absolutely nothing for his owners, Olson came out of nowhere and had his best game of the season. Seven catches for 98 yards. You wish he wouldn't be able to find the end zone for you, but I, I definitely like his upside. He even had more yards than Steve Smith, and that's, that's saying something. So I definitely like Olson's upside. You might want to give it another week, though, to see if this continues or not. I think he's a number two option at best for the matchup with Atlanta this week. Atlanta is, is 3-0, and as we all know, and they're a very uh, good team. So, I, But I like Olsen's upside at number two for the matchup this week. Uh, Colts-Jacksonville, not a whole lot to come out of that game, except for uh, maybe a name to watch going forward is T.Y. Hilton. Um, he he became, I guess, the Donnie Avery this week. Um, and, and I listed him here last week as, as an upside guy, but hear me out on this. Austin Colley now is done for the year, and shockingly, it's not because of a concussion. He tore the patella tendon in his knee. He's unfortunately out for the season. So if you have if you held, if you held your hopes on Austin Colley, you can safely cut him loose. Um, but you know, I've said someone's got to catch passes beside Wayne. 
besides Fleener, uh, there's got to be a third option. But I have loved T.Y. Hilton's speed. I watched this guy play in college at Florida International, and yeah, he was dangerous as a kick returner, but he also showed in this game that he has that receiver potential. So, um, you know, if you had to choose between the two who's going to be more reliable going forward, I think I would go more with Donnie Avery, but certainly him and Hilton, it wouldn't be an issue, at least for me, to have either of them at least on your bench uh, going forward. You don't know who you know Luck might throw more to, but definitely they should be uh, rostered. They should definitely be worth a look, at least in 12-team uh, in leagues. Um, Buffalo. On to Buffalo and Cleveland. A um, couple notes on the Bills. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, uh, if you're looking for a uh, strong uh, number two quarterback option, I think Fitzpatrick could be your guy. He uh, he took it. He's taken advantage of his easy matchups, uh, looking good the last two weeks against the Chiefs and against the Browns. He had he was 22 of 35 this week for 208 yards and three touchdowns. Um, but the schedule is not going to be that easy going forward, unfortunately for Buffalo. Um, you know, next week you got to play New England. Uh, that's that's certainly uh, going to be a little bit of a challenge. But you like to see the production. I certainly think Fitzpatrick is a solid number two for that match of this week. New England is is coming off that tough loss to Baltimore. Their secondary isn't exactly stellar. So I like his upside. I think he's a certain uh, a decent number two uh, for that matchup. Like if you're a Roethlisberger owner who loses him due to the bye this week, or if you're not satisfied with your number one, there's a lot of guys at quarterback who aren't producing his number ones right now. Maybe you plug in Fitzpatrick this week. And the running back situation in Buffalo, which continues to get messier by the week. Um, first, we lost Fred Jackson to his knee injury. This week, we lose C.J. Spiller for one to two weeks due to the uh, shoulder injury. He's going to be out for the shoulder sprain. So now, but the problem is Fred Jackson, he, he might play this week. He's been cleared to practice. He might play this week. So a lot of owners probably already went on the wire and grabbed Tashard Choice, and now he might not get a lot of work. Um, he filled in nicely, 20 carries for 91 yards, but now the problem's going to be is he going to come through? Is he going to get the bulk of the work? Is Jackson going to play? You really, really, really want to monitor the situation in Buffalo going forward. Um, obviously, if Jackson's healthy, he's the number one guy. We know that he's been number one from the start, although Spillers looked good in his absence and, and Choice looked good. But as long as Jackson's healthy, he's the main guy, or, or, or you might just want to avoid it altogether. Obviously, they play New England this week. That's a tough matchup for any Buffalo running back. Uh, I see them as whoever goes, Jackson, if it's Jackson, if it's Choice. I see either as nothing more than a number two, maybe number three, uh, just because of the matchup. Um, Jets, Jets in Miami, lots to talk about in this game too, also at running back. Um, remember this name, Bilal Powell of the Jets. Uh, I'm starting to really buy into this guy uh, taking the starting job over Sean Green. Sean Green has been a huge, as I've said here up for weeks now, He's been a huge disappointment. Palau did, uh, you know, less, you know, Green still got more carries but had less yards for it. Powell had 10 carries for 45 yards. It's not a whole lot to wave the flag about. But, you know, if you want to take a long-term risk that might pay off, Powell could be your guy. But obviously, you don't want to start him or Sean Green this week. The Jets play the 49ers. So I'd avoid it. But if you want a long-term option, maybe you take a shot on Powell. Uh, Miami, Reggie Bush goes down with the knee injury. Um, so obviously guys like Daniel Thomas and Lamar Miller become options for this week. Um, I, you know, I, I think I see this as more of a timeshare option. I think they'll split carries if Bush doesn't play, but Thomas obviously is the more reliable fantasy option, I think, for you. But I see them both even as, as more of number threes this week. they got to play that tough Cardinals defense that's come on of late. So if you want to take a deep shot, it's a desperate shot, but I think Thomas is the safer Dolphins running back of the two. Uh, if Bush doesn't go, his status is still unknown at this point. They're calling it a knee bruise, but his status is still unknown. I don't think he's going to play. So if you want to go with the Dolphin running back, I think you go with Daniel Thomas, but only as a desperate number three against that Cardinals defense. Um, Kansas City and New Orleans. Welcome back, Jamal Charles. Uh, he was the number one in CBS leagues and for running backs, put up the number one points this week. 33 carries for 233 yards with a touchdown. Oh, and by the way, also gets helped that Peyton Hillis, who we all thought was maybe going to leapfrog him, goes out with an injury um, to his ankle. He was in a walking boot, so uh, Charles goes off. You want to start Jamal, 
from confidence and here on out, especially against San Diego this coming week, who just got destroyed by Atlanta last week. Definitely get Jamal Charles back in her fantasy lineups. A um, lot of guys um, still, so we're kind of going to go rapid fire here these last five minutes. Um, Andy Dalton of Cincinnati. I mean, the guy's been red hot in CBS League's 28 points, 30 points the last two weeks. Call me crazy, but, you know, in one of my leagues, I'm thinking of starting possibly him over Aaron Rodgers because he has just been – Rodgers has been a disappointment. The numbers don't lie. Dalton is averaging 29 points over his last two weeks. Rodgers, 10.5. It's just – and he has another good matchup with Jacksonville this week. Don't be hesitant to start Dalton if you have him, if you're not confident in your number one guy. Andrew Hawkins, Cincinnati wide receiver. He's becoming a strong weapon for Dalton. He had only I mean he only had two catches for 66 yards this week. I think he had a score also. He scored now the last few weeks. But you could do worse as a number three. I think he's a very strong uh, option as well going forward. Fred Davis, the Washington tight end. I don't know what to make of this one. Is Robert Griffin finally realizing the talent that that Fred Davis has? Um, you know, does he finally realize that? With me, though, I want to see one more strong performance from Davis before I buy into him. He's been kind of a big disappointment this year. Maybe a low one, high number two for this week's matchup against that really poor Tampa Bay secondary. The quarterback situation in Detroit is really messy. Matthew Stafford, we saw him leave that game with a uh, hamstring glute issue. We all said, oh, go grab Sean Hill. Go grab Sean Hill on the waiver wire. De -de 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 -de. But then we read today that Stafford, I mean, yeah, he missed practice, but yes, but Adam Schefter said that all reports are that he's going to play this week. So now we're wondering, oh, what do we do with Sean Hill? Well, you want to monitor the situation. Obviously, if you're a Stafford owner, it might be really close, but if you really are concerned he's not going to play, then go ahead and bench him if you got a better option at quarterback or maybe you grab Sean Hill. So just kind of a wait-and-see approach with him. Um but it, you know, if Hill plays, he's a nice option. I, I like him as a number two mat quarterback for this matchup against Minnesota if he plays. Um, another guy, another quarterback to watch is Jake Locker. Oh my gosh, Tennessee found some offense. I said on here last week that they had no offense. We know how bad Chris Johnson's been. But somehow they found it. Somehow Locker is finally using the weapons around him. Guys like Nate Washington and Jared Cook and all these guys. Now, granted, most of their points came on defense or special teams. But still, for the, to put up these numbers from Locker, 29 of 42 for 378 and two scores, I couldn't believe that. Um, I think he should certainly be owned as a number two quarterback going forward. But Texans D this week, tough matchup. I think he'll fall back a little bit. Speaking of Detroit, Mikel LaShore. He's the guy now you want to have as your Detroit running back. Kevin Smith is done. There's no reason to keep him anymore. 26 carries for 100 yards with a score. I think he's a strong number two for the Minnesota matchup this week. Maybe even low number one. Nate Burleson, speaking of the Lions, another guy you want to watch. Uh, Sean Hill even loves throwing to this guy, but I think he'll still be involved no matter who is. 10 catches for 69 yards and a score. Um, I think he's a number three this week for the Minnesota matchup. Kyle Rudolph, we'll mention him one more week. He should be owned in all leagues at this point, starting with confidence. Um, Michael Turner in Atlanta, still splitting with Jacquez Rogers, but put up a strong stat line, 14 carries, 80 yards, and a touchdown. You're not sitting him against Carolina this week. Ryan Williams of Arizona is another guy that I like. 13 carries, 83 yards, breaking news. Beanie Wells is injured again, who would have thought? thought. Uh, I like him as a solid number two, Williams that is, for the Miami matchup this week. Also, my apology of the week, Larry Fitzgerald, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. Apparently, it doesn't matter who's throwing to you, you put up Buku stats. Nine catches for 114 yards and a score. He's back to being a must start. Heath Miller of Pittsburgh, obviously you're not starting him this week because the bye week, but he should not be available in any league. He should be owned eight catches, 60 yards, two scores. Uh, Wes Welker in New England, he's back, eight catches for 142 yards, he's now a must start, and Torrey Smith of Baltimore, <laughs> clap to you for a great performance, six catches for 127 yards, two touchdowns, brass balls award of the week. Guys that I'm watching but not sold on yet are Ramsey's Barden, Cecil Shorts, Jeremy Curley, Armand Benz, Nate Washington, Damaris Johnson, and Golden Tate. That's it for the studs, check out the duds video, leave your comments below, good luck in week four. Thanks guys.